This is, to many here in the room, the most iconic Rolex wristwatch in the world. So I'm making James film me because I can't tell if I'm going crazy. That's 38 millimeter. Yeah. I'm not crazy. So this might be one of my stupidest videos yet, but it's something I cannot stop thinking about. Rolex sizing. So my obsession with Rolex sizing started with this watch. My Rolex Daytona. This watch just wears so perfectly. It sits so right on the wrist that it made me into a Daytona person. I didn't want to be a person who loved this watch, but as soon as it was on the wrist, it clicked. Another Daytona victim. There's something about this watch and the wearing experience and the overall proportions that make it feel smaller than its advertised specifications. So this is advertised as a 40 millimeter watch, but I always said it wears much more like a 38 mil. I thought maybe it's a small lugs or the asymmetrical case shape, but I just couldn't get it out of my head. Why does this wear so small? So I got out these bad boys, my trusty calipers, and I gave it a measure just a couple days ago. That's 38 millimeter. Yeah. It was not 40 millimeters. So then Conspiracy Brittany <laughs> starts going, she starts churning. Like, are all Rolexes like this? Is this like some big uh, conspiracy thing? <laughs> so I start measuring all of our watches. So the Santos is bang on accurate. It's giving me 35 and a half. It's 30. Can I, is it seeing on there? It's yeah. 32. So the sizes were a bit hit or miss. Some of them were true to form, like the GMT Master 2 was still measuring at 40 millimeters. But then some of them were way off, like my Oyster Perpetual 34 was measuring far closer to 32. But my Cartier Santos measured perfectly. The Patek Philippe Aquanaut measured perfectly. And I know this video is stupid, okay? I feel like this might be the most Karen complaint I ever had but I can't stop thinking about it. It's bothering me. Why does the Daytona measure two millimeters smaller than the size we all say it is and the size it's advertised as? It's getting to me. Why? I think it's just because the watch world is a world where millimeters make a miles difference. Millimeters make a miles difference. <laughs> It's a tiny world. It's a world of teeny tiny gears and these very specific parts that need to be done and put in in very specific ways. Then I start thinking, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'm measuring this wrong. Is there a certain Rolex way of measuring things? For example, the Patek Philippe Aquanaut. This one here. This is advertised as 40 millimeters, but it has an odd case shape. So this one's measured from 10 to four and presto it's 40 mil. So maybe I'm just measuring wrong. So I researched it and nope, I don't think I am measuring it wrong. According to loop, you should measure from three to nine and Watchbox seems to be measuring from nine to three, but then they say to measure from eight to two. Everywhere I look either says nine to three, crown not included or 10 to two. <laughs> Why? I need to let this go. Oh, but why did I say 40 millimeters? I know some of you will already know this about the Daytona, so this won't be reporting anything new, but I just keep thinking why. That's the part that I can't let go of. And to paint the full picture here, I know a lot of watch brands don't give the exact precise correct measurements of the case diameter. I'm okay and cool with rounding up or down for half a millimeter or getting there or thereabouts. And case diameter isn't the only way to gauge how a watch is going to fit. For example, lug case and shape is probably just as important as the case diameter. But I just can't figure out why Rolex would advertise some watches as two millimeters smaller and some bang on the right size. Why would Rolex be somewhat misleading with some of their sizes? What do they have to gain through this? I'd love to hear any of your fan theories in the comments down below because I truly can't figure it out. I wish I had one of the older 37 millimeter references here to compare it against as well because that could be really interesting. I've got the GMT Master 2 here, so 
Even looking at this against the GMT Master 2, you can tell these two are not the same. My best fan theory is maybe this is the Magnum approach. Hey guys, Editing Brittany here. Before I tell you the Magnum theory, which is still a strong theory, after honestly a few weeks of overthinking this whole thing, I think maybe the way I filmed the Daytona for this video probably wasn't the best. I rely on the bezel quite a bit. You're supposed to measure kind of from the widest point to the widest point. And chronographs are a little bit hard to measure because you're not supposed to measure with the crown in and presumably with the pushers. So I think if you get a bit of lug in there too, you can get yourself up to 39. But I feel like it's not supposed to be a measurement with lug in there. I wonder, this is my leading theory now, before I tell you the Magnum theory. I wonder if the 40 millimeter sizing mostly just gives you a flavor for how it's gonna wear without it being exactly precise because it is a difficult watch to measure without getting the lugs in or getting the pushers in. I don't know, it's my best fan theory. I must be measuring wrong. That's all I can think. Okay, that's widest point to widest point of my OP. Oh, it's still not quite right. I'm still getting 33. So in 1988, Rolex revamped this watch with the reference 16520. The case went from 37 millimeters to a more modern 40 millimeter size and switched to an automatic movement sourced from Zenith. This pre-ceramic model was in production from 1988 to the year 2000 and it has been 40 millimeters ever since. Switching from manual wind to automatic caliber movements does equate to larger watches, especially in the 80s and 90s, and what's in vogue for watch sizing ebbs and flows with the times. In the 1970s and early 80s, the average men's watch size was about 32 to 34 millimeters. Of course, there were still watches available to buy that were bigger than that, but most people were probably wearing a smaller watch, quartz or mechanical. Contrasted to now, where men regularly tell me in my comment section that 36 millimeters is a girl size. And I couldn't disagree more. It's the perfect unisex size. Well, you know, even the watch sizes you prefer are highly subjective to you and your wrist size and styles you like. But I digress. I wonder if Rolex wanted to sell the Daytona as a larger size to feed the growing desire for larger watches whilst keeping those perfect proportions and let the magnum effect take root within you. I don't know. I am 100% overthinking this. But this is something that's especially on my mind with this year being the 60th anniversary of the Daytona. Every year people speculate on if this will be the year that the Daytona moves up to 41 millimeters. And I think this could be the year that it happens. Well, I guess that actually means this is the year it becomes 39 millimeter, maybe. <laughs> Still gorgeous proportions, but this isn't a Daytona speculation video. I could make a whole video on that. For this video, I wanna know why do you guys think Rolex advertises this as 40 millimeters when it's really not 40 millimeters? In fact, for all the watch sizing, that's inaccurate. Why do you think companies do this? I feel like we should have a more standardized way of measuring watches and delivering accurate measurements to customers. Hey guys, last visit from Editing Brittany here. I just have to give a big disclaimer and say, I'm totally willing to be wrong here as well. Like I'm totally willing for all of the watch community to say, Britt, you were just measuring it wrong, okay? I'm totally willing for that to be the truth. I'm sorry if I present my opinions or my findings just as like concrete fact, because I know that rubs people wrong sometimes. So if I'm measuring things wrong and I just have this totally wrong, please let me know. But I just can't see a way that you measure this watch and it comes out 40 millimeters <laughs> without getting the lugs in or pushers. I don't know. Anyways, tell me I'm wrong if I am wrong. Totally okay with that. All right. <sighs> okay, guys, this is such a stupid video. I know this doesn't matter, but I can't stop thinking about it. If you have a Daytona, can you give yours a measure and see if I'm going crazy or does yours measure as 38 millimeters too? I need to end here. I, I gotta stop speculating. I could do this all day. Um, do all that YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Patron song. Let's go. Let's do it.
Patrons, have I told you you're the best today? Have I thanked you enough today? Probably not. Thank you, Poop Dear. Poop Dear Patrons. Thank you, all the patrons, but most notably, Poop Dear Patrons.